So today we're going to continue looking at uh, full body pleasure and coming to understand what it is and how we, every single person, can experience it. Um, so if we look on the Western paradigm of what is sexual energy, um, we're told in the West that sexual energy is something that we need to kind of put in a box and basically block off from the rest of our lives. So for example, you know, even though internet porn is like widely available, so many people are watching it. When we go on Facebook, we're supposed to kind of imagine that, you know, women don't have nipples and that sort of sexual whatever doesn't really kind of exist, you know? And we're living in this kind of delusional world where actually we are having like re-sexualized images pushed into our face. And yet at the same time, we're supposed to be, you know, uh, pretending that we don't have, you know, genitals or something, you know? And um, what this what this is doing is essentially it's creating like a whole, um, uh, let's say like a whole energy of guilt and shame around our sexuality and just like a huge amount of confusion. So especially because of like the contradictory um, messages, you know? Um, and what this does is it causes like, yeah, confusion, guilt and shame around our sexual organs. It causes us to basically contract around what in Tantra we call the sexual chakra, which is just above our pubic bone. And it causes the sexual energy to contract into our genitals rather than rise up our body. So um, if you look at Tantra, Tantra has this idea of Kundalini energy that rises up the body. And what this is, is our sexual energy rising up our body and basically transforming into love, into healing, into creativity, into enlightenment, into just every energy that we need in our lives. And if you look in Taoism, it's a very sim similar thing with the microcosmic orbit, you know? Now, I remember reading like an anthropology book about this tribe in Venezuela, I think they're called the Yequana, and basically they, um, she's describing how these people just pair bond for life as teenagers, there's no, taboos around sex and yet at the same time there's no sort of like adultery or people cheating on their partners you know and the, the sex is just in a very natural way that there's no kind of guilt and shame attached to it and at the same time she's describing how these people have like almost no muscles and yet they're like incredibly incredibly powerful and I think that what this to me is to, is saying is that basically these people they're so in nature they've never heard of like Christianity or anything like that you know but their energy is so uh, it's it's um, circulating and moving in their body so well that they actually don't need muscles to do things, you know, and the thought of like, like, apparently, like none of them masturbate is unheard of for anybody to masturbate, it just wouldn't occur to anyone to to want to do that, you know, which to me, it indicates there's just not the kind of like build up of sexual frustration that we seem to kind of experience here um, in the West, you know, and um, so so when we kind of start to understand that um, by this whole thing of um, the way that sex in our society goes from being, you know, uh, um, on the one hand shamed, on the other hand, like pushed on us in this kind of excessive way that's um, really a little bit kind of, uh, is a bit too much, it's a little bit yucky, you know, basically, you know, um, we, and when we start to see like other cultures, like for example, if we look at the Taoists, they just don't have guilt and shame around sexuality. In fact, I've heard to this day in China, if your partner or your husband or wife cheats on you, it's not at all normal to divorce them for that reason. And in, in fact, you'd be considered selfish and inconsiderate towards your family if you did that, you know? So, um, so essentially, um, when we start to understand that culturally, our Western, whether we call it Judeo-Christian, the Islamic culture as well, um, these kind of like, uh, uh, let's call them patriot patriarchal and monotheistic cultures have a certain view towards sex, but most of humanity for most of time have not had these same views towards sex. We can start to understand what's going on with our full body pleasure. So let's have a look at how we can actually start unblocking this stuff and how we can use self-pleasuring in order to do this. So what I've started to realize, you know, um, the more that I teach this stuff, you know, and obviously like, you know, I've studied in various places and learned all kinds of like fancy techniques, you know, but sometimes in the end you start just realizing, you know, when you break it down and break it down, it actually like getting simpler and simpler is almost better you know and like i keep saying this one thing and i'm going to say it again which like number one is breath 
So in Tantra, we talk about breath being the prana, being the energy. And of course, like if we're not breathing properly, I mean, how are we taking the life force, the oxygen into our bodies? Now, when we look at this from a physiological sort of Western medicine perspective, and we understand there's this thing called the autonomic nervous system, which governs um, our involuntary and hormonal responses to things, we can understand, okay, we have what we know is flight or fight. On the other hand, we have like the mode of relax and enjoy. And essentially, modern western people like very often are stuck in flight or fight causing all kinds of anxieties and everything but when we look at, at it to do with our body what's going on with our body when we're in flight or fight basically we will breathe up in the chest which means now some people i meet they only breathe like that you know but relax and enjoy breathing means breathing into the belly so just try to put your hands over your belly and breathe in so that your belly is rising and falling. So this is gonna be easier for some people, less easy for other people, but this is most important thing to do. So instead of starting self-pleasuring by putting on a porno, start self-pleasuring by coming into your body and starting to notice your breathing. So a really useful tip is that if you're really struggling, to uh, breathe into your belly just try to like exhale out exhale out as much as you possibly can and then just open your mouth and what happens is this muscle that's here called the thoracic diaphragm will literally like pull the um the um the breath into our bodies and what happens when we really relax is it's kind of like the belly starts pulling the breath in and out you know and this is like such an important thing to do because it's the best way to exercise our pelvic floor it also like massages all our internal organs and really keeps the blood going healthy into like our sexual organs and having like a healthy blood flow into our sexual organs is like so important for like having like both sensation and having like functioning basically okay so um i always like to do a little smile to my heart as well before self-pleasuring because it's really really important to make sure we have both energy centers working so just like when we want to make love to another person hopefully we're feeling this nice buzzy warm loving feeling in our hearts and we really need to like make love to ourselves so self-pleasure in a way in which we're also feeling like in love with ourselves so um smiling to our hearts it's like this like old Taoist tip probably one of my favorite exercises just smiling to our hearts sending love to our hearts and getting this little fluttery feeling of self-love which is actually the electromagnetic field of our heart opening because when we're doing this practice we want to turn the heart into this like lovely sort of like magnet which is going to be pulling the sexual energy up our body because it's when the sexual energy is coming into our body that we're able to access full body pleasure so um now let's look we've done two things so far okay so we've um we've smiled to our hearts we've checked in with the breathing and i mean this breathing thing i would say both of these exercises you can smile to your heart and tell your heart a thousand times in one day i love you i mean i like to do this all the time just tell myself i love you and it's not going to build arrogance it's not going to build you know selfishness it's actually going to build like confidence in ourselves which makes us more able and it more easy for us to actually be kind to others you know so um yeah i mean the whole thing of like being absolutely you know genuinely in love with yourself is the key to actually like being able to give love to another person now then the belly we want the belly to be breathing to for the the belly to be rising and falling okay and then we can start to come down towards um the the experience of pleasure in our bodies now a lot of the reason why we may not be experiencing pleasure in our bodies is we've just in our mind cut off the from the idea of it but if we use consciousness and intention for example even with the arm so a tantric touch is very slow and gentle and when you actually start going very slow and gentle you can start realizing we have a lot of sensation and for example if i go the back or front of the arm the sensation is different and by doing this, what I'm actually doing is I'm waking up the energy. So now I feel like my arms are tingling a little bit and I can stroke the energy down 
into my heart, connect with that love, give a little smile, a little I love you to my heart, collect that love, and then gently and slowly bring it down towards the legs. So we can very much do the same thing, stroking up the inside of our legs, waking up that energy and bringing it in towards our sexual organs. So, um, so basically once we've started getting this, hopefully you're starting to get like a little awakened feeling in your body, you know, and absolutely like the head is great. I mean, I just love behind my ears. I think it's because like nobody ever, you know, touches really behind your ears, although in tantric massage, I, I'll spend like up to like five minutes around the backs of the ears and the ears. And it's like such a special place because it's actually like really super sensitive. But the point is that we're using tantric gentle touch to wake up this energy in our bodies. And sometimes we can get like all kinds of strange stuff coming on as we do this. So it might even be like feelings of like, sometimes it can be like a little emotional, you know, but if emotions come up, what's important is just go into the emotion and you can go into it in a, you know, even a cathartic and self gratuitous sort of way, you know, but these are actually emotions that got stuck as blockages inside of our body because we didn't process them at the time. And they're coming up so that we can basically like, um, uh, get rid of them, you know, and heal from them. And this is the process of the body opening up, you know, the process of um, sometimes feeling emotional. And now when it comes to the sexual organs, now whether you're a man or a woman, whether you have a, a vagina, a penis, or whatever you might have, because some people were even finding out has got both genitalia as well, you know, um, is to um, uh, is to basically approach it yeah, in a really, really gentle way. So approach like, you know, imagine like every square centimeter potentially has a different sensation. So what we're trying to actually do is we're trying to break down, you know? So for example, if we're looking at a penis, obviously a penis is like really easy to see. Um, it's easy to see, for example, the head, you know? And to just do little finger movements like this around the head, and that we, you could spend, you know, half an hour just doing this and just tuning into the sensation by focusing your mind to where you're touching. So if you've been used to, for example, like a lot of rough sex or rough self-pleasuring, this might at first kind of sound a bit like, oh, well, you know, um, how am I even supposed to feel anything? How is this supposed to do anything for, for me? And of course it involves a kind of switch of mindset, a switch of paradigm to start to accept that when, for example, if you're watching a porno, looking out of your body, what's actually happening is you're sending the energy out of your body towards the device that you're using. And the way you're touching yourself is extremely disembodied because you're not actually, you don't actually have your awareness in the sexual organs. And very often this can actually just be like a kind of like act of frustration where you're actually just trying to take energy, frustrated energy out of your body rather than to relax into like an extended experience of your energy and your sensations. So um, when, when you start to actually switch and think, right, instead of me feeling, oh, I have a lot of energy and this is like frustrating and I want to just orgasm and get rid of it as quick as possible. What's actually going on is we're saying, okay, this is like energy that I want to bring into my body. And basically once I've brought it into my body, I want to then be able to invite it up. So this switch of paradigm is essential. Yeah. To turn away from the whole idea where, um, we want to get sexual energy out of our body, which means that we're in the paradigm of associating guilt and shame with the sexual energy to making the conscious shift to actually realizing the sexual energy isn't a something that I should feel guilty about and want to get out of my body. Rather, it's something I gently want to relax and start pulling into my body. Now for the lady, I mean, there's so many, many gentle ways we can touch ourselves. And when we start getting into this, you know, uh, it's completely like 
changes our whole experience of our bodies, you know, and um, as well, bearing in mind as women that the pelvic floor is um, the, mu uh, the whole muscular system that's around the vagina that we actually should be and need to be like really careful with. So for example, like put behind the old style of shoving things into the vagina and actually getting to know how we can slowly coax the muscles to pull something inside. So this makes a huge, huge change and difference with what's going on with, um, with basically like our, um, our, you know, sexual energy and how we experience it. And, uh, and just giving like a kind of like an honoring and a kind of respect to our sexual organs. So bearing in mind, you know, for example, in Tantra, we would use this word, uh, yoni you know in taoism the jade gate you know the the sexual organs were really revered as sacred you know which doesn't so much exist in our culture but when we start understanding that actually the act of self-pleasuring the act of self-love is actually like you know a really sacred act I, I think a friend recently was telling me that in his culture in africa it's normal to make say a prayer before making love. And I think this is like really, really important to go, you know, what I suggest to my clients and to people is to go in with like a sense of basically like a, a meditation, start, start with it as a meditation. So that in the meditation, you're tuning into the energy, you're building up the energy and then bring, bring in the sexual energy, but bring it in as like a sacred life force, you know, and just moving, so for example, for women, there's a practice called orgasmic meditation, which, which literally involves putting the finger just to the left of the clitoris and just stimulating like this for 20 minutes. So even like putting on a timer and doing it on yourself or getting a partner to do it for you, you know, and just slowness is just so, so, um, so powerful, you know? And when we start doing this very gentle self-pleasuring with the breathing, with the belly, rising up and down you know awareness smiling into the heart keeping on smiling into the heart and keeping the jaw relaxed you know as well is very very important and the lips just relaxed so a lot of people when they're kind of getting aroused they'll sort of go or make different you know with their with their lips which is actually this is blocking the sexual energy if we're tensing our belly this is blocking the sexual energy so we really like need to like use the breathing to come into like a full body relaxation and if you're um struggling with this i suggest like for example on youtube you can find like nidra yoga videos which is really good for like just relaxing the whole body you know and then just start to experiment with it just bearing in mind that like um all of this stuff is natural to us all of this stuff is programmed to into us already We've just gone through actually like millennia of programming, which take, has taken us away from the sacredness of our sexuality, but it still exists. So what we're doing with the breathing, with the self-love, with the gentle touch and with the gentle touch all over the whole body is we're actually like tuning back in to that sacredness of our sexuality. We're bringing it back into our body and we're using it to heal ourselves. And that healing involves full body pleasure because actually you know being in a state of pleasure is the natural place for us to be it's not pain and suffering that we should be seeking it really is just feeling good because feeling good is simply just the natural sign that things are good and we're doing great